Welcome to week two of our series for the month of November. Thanks in advance. Say that with me. Thanks in advance. We are in a series for the month of November that is all about living life with a thankful and grateful heart. Uh, and it's something, honestly, that we can all do a little bit better. Do you agree? Yep. You, you agree. Thanks. Giving is coming up in just a couple weeks, a time when we get together, we break bread, we reflect on our lives and thank God for the people that we have in our lives. That's really what the season is all about. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever, have you ever thanked somebody for something or thanked somebody for doing something for you before they did it and then afterwards you said thanks in advance? Have you ever done that? Nobody, am I the only one that's like, hey, thanks in advance. Like, could you do this for me? Thank you in advance. And the reason that you said that is because they haven't yet done what they're wanting you to do. But because you are believing that they are going to do what you're asking them to do, you say, say it with me, thanks in advance. You see, just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it isn't going to. Would you agree with that? Just be, because you trust the person, right? And you've asked them to do a favor for you and you really think it's going to happen. But just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that it isn't going to happen. Last week, Mike gave a fantastic, primo, top-notch, cream-of-the-crop message about thanking God in advance. He talked about all the benefits of living with a grateful and thankful heart. You sleep better, you work better, and you live longer. And I just know that I know that I know that I know that we are all a little more thankful this week than we were last week. As you well know by now, because we've talked about it, Friday was Veterans Day, a day that we honor all the men and women who have served our country uh, and put their lives on the line for our freedom. Uh, and, and I kind of uh, mentioned this earlier, but the reason that we are sitting here this morning in peace, the reason that nobody is kicking down the door the reason that we're not worried about having a safe place to meet, the reason that nothing is hindering us from being here, and the reason that we can do everything that we're doing is because we live in a free country. But freedom is not free. And as I was thinking about this message and thinking about all the people in this room, dear friends of mine, that have served and done tours overseas, as I was thinking about that, even though I've never been in the military myself, I can only imagine that there were some moments as they were serving that they were thanking God in advance. On the, the plane ride into a hostile nation, t taking that first step onto foreign soil, I imagine that there were some moments as they were patrolling a barren landscape with enemies hiding in the dirt or the woods or wherever they were, that they were thanking God in advance for safety, right? Thanking God, just you're gonna get, thank you God that you're gonna get me through this. Thank you God that I'm gonna get back to base. Thank you God that I'm gonna get back to, back to camp. Thank you God for provision. Thank you God for a safe return. And I'm 100% certain that there were families in this room that were back home thanking God in advance for their soldiers' safe return, right? So at least some of us in here have a really good idea of what it really means to thank God in advance, not just for a raise, not just for a job or a spouse or this new car that you want, but to thank God in advance when the stakes are much higher, when the stakes are much more severe, when lives are on the line and freedom hangs in the balance. And I know we've said it already, but I just want to say thank you again to the brave veterans who call Summit home, that Summit is blessed to have. Can we just make them feel thanked in this room? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Watching online, thank you. And today we're going to look at a story in the Bible when a man who is in an impossible situation, not dissimilar uh, from what we've just talked about, decided to give God thanks in advance. With the weight of millions of people's lives on his shoulders, instead of complaining and criticizing, he started praising and giving thanks. He did something 
that most of us in here, especially my military men that know anything about tactics or strategy, he did something that most of us in here would think would lead to absolute 100% certain death. You guys know who I'm talking about yet? In the middle of a monumental military moment, the faith to thank God in advance was the deciding factor for the future of the nation of Israel or Judah at the time. Today we're looking at the moment in history when King Jehoshaphat sent the choir instead of the commander. He sent the trumpets instead of the tanks. Come on. He sent the drums instead of the drones. He sent the singers instead of the soldiers. And this message is absolutely 100% about praising Jesus. But it's what they said while they were praising that really ties this into our series for the month of November. Thanks in advance. And I've got to give Mike credit for this one. When he was putting his message together, he said, hey, I'm thinking about uh, talking about King Jehoshaphat. And I said, that'd be a great idea. <laughs> and so this week I stole his material uh, Let's jump right in this morning, and I want to give you a little bit of backstory before we jump right into the praising God and celebrating and, and coming down front and thanking God in advance. Before we get to the fun stuff, I want to give you a little bit of a, a recap of what's going on in context here in the story that we're going to read in 2 Chronicles. If you're on the Bible app, it's all in there for you. If, you've got, if your paper Bible saved, you can pull your paper Bible out right now. So a massive army made up of several nations is marching out against the nation of Judah, of which King Jehoshaphat is the king. And uh, for a long time, I kind of had the question, well, there's Israel and then there's Judah. What's going on here? After the reign of King Solomon, when the country was in peace and united, it divided. Southern kingdom Judah, northern kingdom Israel. And Jehoshaphat didn't live a perfect life, but he was a godly man. And when he found out that the Moabites and the Ammonites and the Meonites, a massive, massive army, one that he had no chance against, was coming to take Judah from them. He gathers the nation together and he proceeds to pray this incredible prayer that ends with this. You ready for this? This is so cool. It, it, this is how the prayer ends. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Oh, that's so good. Oh, my goodness. Just stand up. We'll, we'll end right there. The prayer ended with, we have no idea what to do, but regardless, our eyes are on you. And I just absolutely love that. I have no idea what happens next, but I am thanking God in advance for a miracle. Before we ever get to the really cool part here, he was already thanking God in advance. I have no idea what's going on, God. I have no idea, but my eyes are on you. Oh, it's just so good. You guys don't think it's as good as I do, and I'm disappointed in that. So then the Spirit of God falls on a man named Jehaziel, and he speaks to the king and to the nation. And the last thing he says is do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. He said, don't be afraid. Don't worry about it. Just go face them in battle tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. Listen, he didn't tell them how. He didn't tell them when. He didn't tell them, don't worry about it. Y'all ain't gonna have to fight. He didn't say, don't worry about it. There won't be anything scary about the situation. He didn't say, just go out there. God will take all fear out of your soul. Just go out there and God will make sure that nobody dies. No, he didn't say that. He said, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged and go. You see, it's easy to thank God for a battle that's already been won. But it takes real faith to thank God before you see God. That's good. It's easy to thank God for the battles and the victories he's already brought to you. That's easy. Mike was talking about that. That's gratitude. Thank you, God, for what you've done in the past. But it takes real stone-cold faith to thank God before you see God. Oh, it's easy to be excited about obeying the Lord when that obedience leads to a reward. 
But stepping out in faith, thanking God in advance when you really aren't sure what happens next, that's what separates people who act like it and people who live like it. Oh man, that was better than y'all giving me credit for. (laughs) When you're really not sure of what the future holds, but you still say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's what separates the people who call themselves Christians and the people who live like Christians. You can clap for that one. So often, so often, and you might identify with this, if you're watching online, you might identify with this, but so often we claim to know God with our words, but we deny God with our actions. We claim to know him with what we say, but we deny him with what we do. Friends, I'm here to tell you that extraordinary acts of God start with ordinary acts of obedience. That's good. Extraordinary moves and miracles of God start with really very ordinary and mundane acts of obedience. And Mike said it last week, but the word says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. This is the will of God for your life. It says rejoice always. There's an there's a operative word there, and that is always. In the good times and the bad times, rejoice. Pray in the good times and the bad times. Give thanks in all circumstances. You want to know what the will of God is for your life? Anybody want to know? We watch it on. You want to know what the will of God is for your life? I'm going to keep hammering this. It says, rejoice always. <laughs> Pray without ceasing and give Him thanks. That's the will of God for your life. That means in the middle of the blessing, thank you, God. In the middle of the battle, Thank you, God. In the middle of the diagnosis, thank you, God. In the middle of the marriage that feels like it's falling apart, thank you, God. Thank God in all circumstances. Oh, this is good. This is really good stuff this morning. Maybe you're quiet because you're taking notes. I'm sure that's what it is. And giving thanks in advance is exactly what we see from King Jehoshaphat the next day as the king marches out to meet their enemy. Let's read uh, 2 Chronicles verse 21. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head or in front of the army. Here it is saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. He sent the choir out in front of the spears and the shields and they said, give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Let's say that together. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Jehoshaphat sent the worship team (laughs) on the front lines Not just to worship, not just to sing, but to thank God in advance for a breakthrough beyond belief. The key here is that they were thanking God for something that has not happened yet. Remember at the beginning, you asked somebody to do something for you that has not happened yet, but you believe that they're going to, and so you say, thanks in advance. They were giving thanks to the Lord when certain death knocked on their door. (laughs) Instead of pouting, they were praising. Instead of complaining, they were confiding. Instead of doubting, they were declaring. They were thanking God in advance when everything around them and most likely inside of them said, you are going to die. (laughs) And you can just imagine those poor baritones. Dave, are you a baritone? I think he is. You're a, what are you, Dave? A bass? He's a, no, Dave's not a tenor. Get out of here. He's a soprano. <laughs> when he gets upset, he's a soprano. I'll tell you what. Or an alto. You can just imagine these poor singers 
And they're, they're together. And just imagine, just imagine Wendy and Mike and Cassie and, and Dave. And I'll be the commander. Why not? <laughs> and I've got all of you. And you're the army. And you're tough. And you've got swords and shields. And I say, there are people coming against Summit Church. And we've got to march out and fight them. And I say, but instead of us going out there, why don't we send the worship team <laughs> to go out? And that we're not asking them to fight. We want them to go out and just start singing to them. No shields, no provisions, just their voices. And here is what I want you to say. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. And I like to think that Mike and Cassie and, and Wendy and Dave, they're super spiritual if you know them. Especially, now I'm not going to go there, Dave. I'm picking on Dave too much. <laughs> but they're super spiritual. But I, I think then they would still think I'm ridiculous. I would, this is what I would hear from somebody, probably the elders of the church would say, Kevin, I see where you're coming from, but have you thought about? Maybe this isn't the best idea. <laughs> Inside joke. And they were human. King Jehoshaphat's worship team, they were human. So we know that, or we can deduce that they were probably just as terrified as we would be, right? But in the middle of the unknown, they said, give thanks to the Lord. Standing in front of the biggest army that they had ever seen in their life, doing something they'd never done before. Thanking God in advance for a miracle that they may not even have really believed was actually going to happen. My question to you this morning is, what would you have done? What would you have done when you find out Kevin is sending the worship team to fight the army? What would you have said? What would your position of faith have been? What are you doing today? What would you have done in your own life? We may never face an army like what Jehoshaphat was facing, but we are all in the middle of some kind of battle that most of us probably don't know about. And in the middle of that battle, are you saying, God, I have no idea what you're going to do, but my eyes are on you. God, I have no idea what's going on here, but I am thanking you in advance. I have no idea what you're doing or how you're going to do it. This situation seems impossible and highly unlikely, but here I am, God. I've got a prodigal son or daughter that I'm praying back into the kingdom, but it hasn't happened yet. There is more month at the end of the money. <laughs> my marriage is falling apart and my body isn't far behind it, but here I am, God, on the front lines of life, thanking you in advance that you are making a way where there seems to be no way. I may not see it, but here I am, God, believing for it. I may not see it with my eyes, but I'm believing in my heart. Now, what should have happened next, and what maybe you're thinking does happen next, is that the entire orchestra or choir gets picked off one by one by arrows and spears, and, and all of a sudden, now it's the only, only the sopranos are singing, and, and then the bass, and now you can't hear anything, and everybody dies right there. But it was a holy thing to do. It was the right thing to do, but everyone dies. That's what you would. And now send the real, now send the logical explanation. Now send the logical answer in to do what the spiritual thing couldn't do. That's what you and I would do today. It's just, just honest. Most of us would have done that. Because what a foolish thing to do to send the worship team in front of us to give thanks to God for something that certainly isn't going to happen. How foolish. And the world may think that you're foolish. They may look at you and say, how could you possibly thank a God for all the things that he's allowed happen to you? How could you possibly do that? How could you possibly give thanks in advance to a God? He's allowed you to have no money. He's allowed your, your children to pass away, your husband, your wife to pass. How could you possibly thank God that would allow that to happen to you? Hear me. Vision gives pain purpose. Vision, what you set your eyes on, gives the pain purpose. That's good. It gives what you're walking through purpose. And the best way to get vision for your future is to thank God in advance. 
One of the best ways to see what's coming down the line is to start thanking God in advance. To see what everybody else sees, but to do what nobody else is doing. <laughs> Especially in the world we live in today. We're all seeing the same thing, but we're all doing different things. I want to be the type of Christ follower that sees what everybody else sees, but I'm doing what nobody else is doing. Let's see what happens here in verse 22. As they begin to sing and praise, <laughs> and because we know what they said, as they begin to thank God in advance, as they begin to say, give thanks to the Lord, his love endures forever. As they begin to do that, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Am Ammon, Ammon, sorry, Moab, Mount Seir, who are invading Judah. Here's the cool part. And they were defeated. Jehoshaphat, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. We all understand this. Had an army or somewhat of an army. Instead of sending the soldiers he did have, he sent the worship team. They said, thank you, God. We're all going to die, but thank you anyway. And God said, that's what I was looking for. And it actually says that the Moabites and the Ammonites and the Meonites started stabbing each other. <laughs> they started slaying each other. And you can just imagine the worship scene going, ho, 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 ho. Dave starts playing a little bit louder. You better believe it. Cassie starts doing that, oh, thing that she does. <laughs> Wendy started just doing this thing. And Mike was back there with a hand in the air, just beating the drums, <laughs> crying. Give thanks to the Lord in Jesus' name. It's kind of funny, but think about it. Thanking God in advance might seem foolish to you. It might seem like something that's hard to do, but I promise you, if you were on the front line like Jehoshaphat's worship team, and you started saying thanks in advance, thank you, God, thank you, God, your love endures, and you started seeing your enemy kill each other, You'd play a little bit louder. You'd sing a little bit harder. You'd believe a little bit deeper. And you would have the faith to thank God in advance in the future. Hear me. Hear me in this. God is in control of everything. Therefore, I can give thanks in everything. God, because God is in control of everything, it frees me to have the ability to thank God in the middle of everything. Not because of the situation, but because of the one who is in control of it. It's the small things that nobody sees that leads to the big results that everybody wants. The time that you spend alone at home thanking God in advance in private on your knees with your hands lifted and your eyes closed, it's the small things that nobody sees that leads to the big results that everybody wants. You see, the army didn't know that the day before King Jehoshaphat gathered the entire nation together and said, Lord, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. It's the small things that nobody sees that leads to the big results that everybody wants. The king saw what everybody else saw, but he did what nobody could believe. And I think another aspect to this is so often we get into this rhythm of begging God. You, you know what I mean? Let me give you an example like, oh God, please. <laughs> please move here I am God please do something <laughs> please fix my husband <laughs> please God fix my kids please God give me a different boss or a different job help me now God anybody ever prayed anything like that yep. God if you're real give me a sign I need money <laughs> We spend so much time begging God. Look, look at this. And we have, we have every right to, right? Like that's what we should be doing. Look at Psalm 104. I want you to read this. Look at this. Psalm 104 says, enter his gates with complaining. Hold on, I want to move around so y'all can see this. Go into his courts with grief. Give sadness to him and beg his holy name. That's what it says, right? 
But it says Psalm 1. You know what? It's the convenient translation. Doggone it, man. If you're not careful, that convenient translation will sneak right up on you. This is what we do, though. So often, this is what we do. We enter his gates or his courts, and that's just meaning for us today, his house. And are we sure this isn't right? Are we sure that this is wrong? Because this is what we do. A lot of times, I mean, this is, this is what we do. We come into his house, and uh, I've had a rough week, and man, just bummer, bummer, bummer. I'm just sad, sad, sad. Look at this. Enter his gates, enter his house with thanksgiving. Enter his house with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Oh, it's a little different. Enter his house with thanksgiving. That means enter his house and say, God, thank you for everything that I have. I know I just got into a fight with my wife in the car, but thank you, God, that I have a wife that will put up with me. Give thanks and praise his holy name. Don't beg God. Thank him in advance. Not just when things are looking good and going your way, but in all things, give thanks. Thank you. Here's what this looks like. You guys want to know the, di the, you just heard what you shouldn't do. We do it, but what you shouldn't do. This is what you should do. You ready for this? Thank you, God, that you are moving. When you hear me pray, F Father, we invite you into this house this morning, but we know that you're already here. I don't have to beg you to be here. Your word says where two or more are gathered, I am there. He is in this house right now. Thank you, God, that you are moving. Thank you, God, that you are my help in times of trouble. Thank you, God, that you have already placed eternity in my heart and given me the Holy Spirit to live this life the way that you intended. Thank you, God. Worship team, you can come up here. Thank you, God, that you have given me the power to become all that you want me to be. Think about this. Where are my parents in the house? Parents, come on, raise your hands, parents. Look at all these parents. You're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to know this part. Okay, let's just, just theoretically here, hypothetically, all the etiquettes. <laughs> um, a couple of you caught that. Think about this, parents that have kids. How often do they come and say, Mommy, Daddy, please. Please, I want this for Christmas. Oh, you're hearing it now. You're, I, I'm sure, watching online, I'm sure you're hearing this right now. Mommy, Daddy, please. I saw this horse at Walmart and I want it. <laughs> I saw this American doll, it's like $190. I want it now. <laughs> But, but if you're being honest, after a while, don't you start to go, ugh. <laughs> don't you look at your kid and be like, I don't like you as much as I did a little bit ago. <laughs> you are getting on my nerves. Tell me, after all that begging, does it make you want to buy it for them more? Do you go, oh, I just, I'm so glad you begged the whole month of November and the first half of December because now I'm going to buy it for you. Had you not begged me, I wouldn't have done it. But because you begged me, I'll definitely do it. No. Now let me ask you this. What if, what if your kid came up to you randomly, right, and said, Mom, Dad, I just want to say thank you for everything that you've done for me. Oh, what do you want? <laughs> I've got a budget for it. I mean, what do you want? Buy you anything. What if your kids came up to you and said, and I just also want to say, thank you for all the things that you're going to do for me. I'm not through school yet. I'm not through high school yet. I know there's a lot of life left to be lived, and I just want to say thank you for all the things that you're going to do for me. 
How much more would you want to do things for them? Anybody? How much more? And one of the reasons that we have a hard time thinking in advance for us, uh, everybody in the room, is because we have forgotten what it is that God has done for us in the past and what God has given us in the past. We have a hard time remembering where we used to be and where we are right now. Amen? Anybody? It slips away from us sometimes. How easy it would have been for King Jehoshaphat to let fear and intimidation overwhelm him and start running for the hills, begging for his life. Oh God, please! But Jehoshaphat knew that the word said, God inhabits the praises of his people. Or you could say, God lives among. God walks among. God hangs out in the midst of the praises of his people. So instead of begging, King Jehoshaphat said, forget the army for right now. I understand the power of thanking God in advance. And you might think I'm foolish, but watch God show up here in just a second. And it's totally antithetical to how the world thinks. The world says, see it, then believe it. But God says, believe it, and then you'll see it. <laughs> Let's stand up. What would happen if you stopped complaining and started praising? Just curious. What would happen to your kids if instead of hearing you complain and talk about all the negative things happening, they, they heard you say, thank you, God, in advance? How would your kid's life be impacted if they saw their mom and their dad in the midst of the pain and the battle and the trouble and the junk say, God, thank you for everything that I have. <laughs> I'm just grateful to have what I have and I'm glad that you're gonna do some things for me in the future. How would that change your home? How would that change your school for those of us who are in school? What would happen if in the middle of the mess, you stood up and said, you ready for this? Give thanks to the Lord, his love endures forever. What would happen if you started thanking God in advance and declaring his promises over your future? When life smacks you right in the middle of the mouth and you're facing a battle that you know nothing about, what would happen if you started praising God and thanking God Remember, just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it isn't on the way. And if we could only learn to start thanking God in advance, I wonder if he too wouldn't destroy the enemy coming after us. I thank you, God, that the answer is on the way. I thank you, God, that healing is coming. I thank you, God, that the problem is turning around. I thank you, God, that my children will fulfill their destiny. Thank you, God, that my marriage is being restored. Thank you, God, that this country is turning back to you. Thank you, God, that the righteous will prevail. Thank you, God, that the Holy Spirit is with me and on me and in me and upon me and around me. Woo! Thank you, God, that I am clothed and covered in the blood of Jesus. Thank you for redemption and restoration and salvation. Ah, when you see me down here with my hands in the air, when you see the people down here lifting their hands, when you see the people on this stage praising, when you see Mike with one hand in the air, the other hand hitting 14 different drums, when you see that, you got to know we are thanking God in advance. Thank you, God, that I'm no longer a sin and a slave to sin. Thank you, God, that my past doesn't define me anymore. Thank you, God, that you're writing a new future. Thank you, God, that you're bringing me a wife. You're bringing me a husband. Woo!